So over the next couple days, I have an incredible opportunity to fish with my good buddy, Scott Crippen. Now, Scott and I are gonna be targeting largemouth bass. And that's really what I consider to be America's fish. That's the fish that just about everybody can go out and catch. And it's one of the most incredible fisheries that the state of Florida has to offer. Now we're gonna be fishing in the stick marsh in Lake Garcia, and we're gonna be focusing on the impacts that the spraying of chemicals have had on the fishery itself. I'm Captain Sam Atwell, and this is Florida Sportsman Waterman. All right, so day one, no surprise, we're driving to the spot where we're gonna launch the boats and white out fog conditions. You know, we're used to adverse weather, obviously. And so this wasn't any different. However, it wasn't freezing cold and windy. It just was fog so thick that you could cut it with a knife. But we were okay with that. I think uh, ideally we would have loved to have a little bit of sunlight in the morning. So it wasn't ideal conditions, um, especially for throwing like top water and things like that, that we really wanted to, to, uh, to get into early morning. What's the rationale behind spraying? Is it just they're trying to kill invasive species or is it? Yeah, so hydrilla is an invasive species. It came from like aquarium grass that got like tossed in the ditch in Tampa and they got into Miami and it's like super prolific so they start spraying the hydrilla but you know the problem is you're killing all the native stuff with it and yeah I mean there's got to be a lot of good stuff that live in the hydrilla well, like that natural like eelgrass and stuff the hydrilla just chokes it out it just grows so fast you know so they try and keep the hydrilla under control which makes sense but you know the spraying it probably isn't the best you know, there's mechanical ways of removing it and mm -hmm. But you see how see all that hydrilla down there? I mean, it's, it's like a filter. You know, it just cleans up. Sure. See how so clean that water it's is. It's a lot like the seagrass in the in the river. It's there. Exactly like that. Uh huh. Yeah. You, know, you know how muddy it gets without the when the grass is gone in the river. You know, mm -hmm. the wind's blowing. I mean, how how do they discriminate against killing hydrilla versus anything else? I don't know? think they do. You know, yeah. So so that's the problem. Everything. Yeah. They're trying to. Yeah. They spray this these like pads and water lettuce. They spray spray a lot of stuff to keep like. You know, I understand the navigable part, you know, you want to keep the water open, but. Yeah, come summertime, it really fills up, doesn't it? Like all this stuff, oh, yeah. really, like, once yeah, it gets really time. hot and muggy. I mean, it is, it is a problem. You know, everybody blames the spring for the lack of hydrilla, but I mean, the hydrilla really does just completely take over everything. Mm -hmm. So you have to, you know, I think more of those like mechanical harvesters and stuff would be a, yeah, it might be a little better bit more, way of, you know. a little bit more costly, but it's probably the better way of doing things. Yeah. I like it. It's refreshing. It is doing refreshing. Doing something different coming out here. No salt. No salty. Easy boat wash. That's right. I feel like we got hosed down on the way out here. It's not often it gets that foggy. I guess this time of the year we'll have our fair share, but not very many days like that. There's a lot going on out here, lots of birds. Yeah. Gorillas. <laughs> Skunky. Did you get a nibble? Yeah, a little guy. Ooh. Way Is bigger it? than yours though. Is it a little guy? <laughs> yeah, he's <it's> on. <laughs> Trying to make you feel better? <laughs> That's okay, I don't mind it. Taught a lesson here. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. What's a big bass for you? Some, this place doesn't have like as many big bass as uh, the lake. You know, there's some six, seven pounders in here. And if you look at the uh, record catches, there's probably 30 or 40 a year over eight in here. Mm -hmm. You know, they get some tens, but mm -hmm. the stick marsh next door seems to hold bigger fish for whatever reason. 
Is there like certain times of the day you like to use certain types of lures, Scott, or? Yeah, I mean, there's worms this time of year always work for you. Mm -hmm. Fish them slow, but yeah, like once the water heats up a little bit, I like these swim baits a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Fish get a little more active. And they do you tend to get like start bigger? chasing bait fish, you know? Bigger fish on a worm or? Yeah, I mean, it's all kind of relative, I yeah. guess, but they definitely get, as they get more active, a swim bait seems to work pretty good. Mm -hmm. You'll see those bait fish start showering and whatnot. Uh-huh. Good time to pick it. Is there might be a fish on that bed right there? See that? Definitely a bass bed. Come on, baby. This segment is brought to you by Ingle. Live original. Wake up early on your days off. Go on an adventure. Get out on the water. Here at Ingle, we live for these days. We think you should spend more time in nature. Let us help you enjoy it. For those that care about quality, who want to get out into the world with a confidence that their gear is going to stand up to the day's challenges, Ingle Coolers are built for you. All right, so day two, we started off our day in Lake Arcia. Now, Lake Arcia is a flooded agricultural land. It used to be farmland, cattle, and things like that. And it's an absolutely beautiful lake, tons of grass, and we did catch a lot of male fish, which were smaller, but we weren't really catching the fish that we were really looking for. Good one. Hey! Well done, buddy. Starting off right. Goes a couple pounds, huh? Yeah. Like the old uh, top water. Yes, sir. You called it. At least we know it's warm enough. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, cast that. <laughs> oh boy. Come on, baby, get over there. There you go. Oh, that grass made me a little nervous. I figured there was one gonna sit in there. Nice little fish. Let me get around here. Uh, oh, Scott, mine is bigger. <laughs> maybe not, maybe he's like the same size. <laughs> Hungry. Wanted it. Look at the belly on this one. Yeah, I'm still not spawned yet, huh? Yeah. Pretty. So all you gotta do is just forget all the worms and target throw speed. soft water plugs all yeah, day. That's right. <laughs> Apparently they like it. I do agree with what you say that it makes sense. Like as soon as we get into them, we do get bite after bite after bite. Oh, there you go. Not a bad one. That's a cool bite. Yeah, it was. Oh, uh, he's got me in the grass. I got him, I got him. He's got me in the grass again. Oh, God, did you see that? Man, he's deep in there now, Scott. I got him. He's just he's yeah, he's head, head down in the grass. <laughs> This is a trout. Dragging him through the thing.
Here we go. A little bit of grass for you. That's healthy fish. Yeah, it's a pretty one. A little chunk here. There you go, show off. <laughs> The relationship between spring in these freshwater lakes and ponds and waterways um, in regards to eventually ending up in our river system and how the high levels, essentially they're spraying what we see all over TV, which is the Roundup. We know how many issues that has, cancer issues and uh, really harmful chemicals that are really, really, really dangerous. And all these bodies of water will eventually end up in that, in that, that river system and beyond. Um, we haven't been doing, we haven't been spraying long enough to really know the full length of damage that it's, it's, it's incurring. And there's gotta be better ways of doing this to where we could even even harvest that grass like you were talking about. I mean, there's a certain value to that and or just get rid of it using the mechanical harvesters. There's alternatives. And the same guys that are protecting the fishery, the FWC and, and other organizations, you know, county workers and things are the ones who are responsible for spraying, ironically. This segment is brought to you by Bad Fish. Captain approved tackle delivered. Florida Sportsman Waterman is sponsored in part by these fine companies. Yeah, I think there's just definitely better ways of, you know, they, they do have those mechanical harvesters on, on the lake, you know, they don't they don't run them as much because it's easier to spray spray a big area, but, you know, I feel like they could control most of the navigable parts and edges and stuff, you know, mm -hmm. decent enough with, with more of them. Yeah, I mean, it's hard, it's hard to really just blame like one thing, but I think it's certainly a contributing factor to a lot of the problems that we do have in the Indian River. Yeah, you just hate to have that stuff in the water. You know, it comes, gets all in the Kissimmee River and makes its way down into the lake, and then they're spraying the lake and spraying all those waterways, and then that eventually makes it to you know to the lagoon. You know, the fresh water deal is definitely not a new thing. You know, there's obviously you always get rainfall in the summer, and you know, when we were kids, there's tons and tons of fresh water in the river, just like there is now. But you know, the grass was always you know just as thick. It never it never died off. You know. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I can remember fishing, you know, the, the river actually looked like a lake, just total fresh water and the fishing was excellent. The grass was intact, you know? Now it's like you get that rain as soon as the summer starts and that grass is just, you know, whatever you had in the spring has died off and gone, you know? Mm -hmm. So I feel like it really has to be due to some kind of contaminants in the water, you know? 100%. I, so many people look at the color of the water and it's that tannic color and they're like, see, it's dirty water, but it, that's the way that yeah, it's I supposed mean, it's to be. Yeah, I mean, it's flush. Yeah, the rainwater is supposed to get in there. But it's know? what's in the, what's the consistency of the water exactly. that is the exactly. problem. Yeah, populations doubled or tripled since, you know, mm -hmm. 50s and, you know, he's got a lot more runoff and, you know, spraying, I certainly think is a terrible way to add to it, you know? Scott, how'd you end up start, uh, how'd you end up? Get him, Eddie! There you go. Oh, he's got me uh, in the grass again, that rascal. Oh, pulled you off. It's a little dude. I'm just gonna bring him on in. Still on there. How'd I start bass fishing? Yeah, how'd you end up, how'd you end up bass fishing? Yeah, Getting I into was, it. I always kind of dabbled with it, but I uh, started fishing with some buddies that bass fished a ton. And uh, it's kind of something different, you know? You grew up saltwater fishing your whole life and it was just kind of a something different to go explore. And... 
You're saying your pops so many, was you know, pretty influential though, right? Yeah, well, just fishing in general. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I'm not really sure. I was kind of messed with it and liked it. And there's so many good lakes in Florida that are close by. You know, you can grab a canoe or a John boat or anything, just go fish all these things, you know, it's a lot of fun. Year round fishing. It's nice too, like I take customers sometimes when it's uh, rough on the river, or ocean. You know, you can usually get out of the wind on the lake somewhere, so makes for a fun day. Join us for this week's On the Conservation Front as we dive deeper into critical water issues facing the state. So all the chain lakes in Florida are being sprayed. Everything down to your neighborhood retention ponds being sprayed. Okeechobee is a case in point of a lake that's being sprayed in a big way. It's a big lake, a lot of invasive grasses and weeds. Um, the problem with Okeechobee is it's already got a lot of nutrients from inflows. So Okeechobee's got a problem with algal blooms. Now what happens with the big wholesale chemical spraying is all that vegetation dies in mass and all the dead vegetation goes to the bottom and adds to the muck layer. And the muck layer holds all that phosphorus. So lo and behold, what happens is you have more phosphorus in the system, more blooms, and it's troubling, it really right. is. Well, let's step back for a second. Why are we even spraying? For those that don't understand this, I mean. There's so much of this invasive stuff now in Florida lakes that is such a large scale problem. There's not enough mechanical harvesters to do the job. Um, they need to get back to mechanical harvesting and the commission would love to get back to more mechanical harvesting. Mechanical harvesters go along with a paddle wheel propulsion system. They have a big open mouth in front. It's like a baleen whale that goes along and eats plankton. It takes up the floating vegetation Sam, and doesn't hurt the emergent seagrass, which is rooted. Okay. And they can actually let ducks, bass, and turtles go. They get caught there. Really? So it's selective. It's selective, it's non destructive. Whereas the chemicals, they'll strafe a whole area of the lake, it'll be a dead zone. And most guys and anglers will tell you that area becomes muddy, it becomes non fishable for a long time, for months right. at a time, because there's no fish there anymore. This segment is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. We decided to put the boat back on the trailer and launch in the stick marsh. Now the stick marsh, so the stick marsh used to be actually a vegetable farm, which once again, it is all ag land out there, but now it's it's a flooded area and they don't call this stick marsh for nothing. The stick marsh, I think sticks are, are I think when they say stick, stick marsh that's pretty light in terms of in terms of how they're wording it there's not just sticks in this marshy area there are tree chunks and so if you don't know where you're running i suggest hiring somebody that does because it's the it's a good spot to lose your lower unit or lose your propeller and i did rely off scott a lot to get to and from the spots that we were fishing in there Certainly, if you're new to the area and you decide to push your boat in there, go low and go slow to figure out where it is you guys need to be going, running and going to and from. But the fishing's great in there. Something that I keep trying to emphasize on is just how different the stick marsh is from Garcia and Garcia is from Blue Cypress and so on and so forth. It really is, it, uh, it really, gives you a broader perspective by going to each one of these locations. And they're all just so unique on their own right. Um, it really is a pleasure to go to each one of these. Scott, how do you like to uh, work these trees in here? Just kind of flip around there, you know, and just let it sink down, go down the side of the trees. and Fishing structure? Yeah, it's kind of up and down, you know, more like a, like a triple tail almost. Oh, there's a bite right there. Got a bite? Yeah. Did you get one? Ah, it feels pretty good. Oh, definitely around the tree or something. Oh my God, that's, that's a good one, dude. <laughs> that's a nice one. <laughs> oh tight? my gosh. Oh, oh boy. Oh boy. Whoa. Oh baby. Good one. Oh. <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. They're getting bigger. Come on, come on. Oh, yeah, there we go. Not a bad one. Not at all. Oh man, had to pick few, through a few small ones, but a fish is really good. A fish isn't bad, huh? Yeah, not at all. Give me some. This little fat guy. Appreciate yeah. it, man. Not 
Too cool shabby. fish. Pretty fish. Well done, man. Nice. Man, it's funny. It's like you get in a little patch, you know, you go all day and super slow, and then you get in a little area, and there's like 10 fish in there. That's know? what you're saying. You're it saying all looks the same. You get it's multiple bites in the same spot. Exactly. Oh, there you go. Like that. Oh, you got him? Oh, boy. oh yeah, baby! <laughs> Woo! That's a nice one, dude. Not there a bad one. Not a bad one. Heck yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. All in the same spot. That's what I'm talking about. I like these trees, huh? It's a nice fish. Solid fish, man. Not a bad one, not the smallest. That fish, man. Hammered that thing, huh? Hammered it. They like that little spinner tail on these. It's funny when they get bigger, they really do feel like grouper or something. I know. <laughs> All right, he's ready. Nice, man. It's exciting. It's fun stuff when it comes together. Yeah, man. It's nice when a plan works out. Yeah, man, that was fun. I really appreciate you oh, having man. me out. It's Dude, a good time. It's, it's a pleasure, seriously. It's nice to get in the fresh water every once in a while and change it up too, you know? A little yeah. change of scenery. Yeah. That was a good day though, a lot of, a lot of fish and a yeah. day. Yeah, Thank yeah, we gotta work for it sometimes, but it, you know, it's interesting how the fish don't always show up in the you know first part of the day like no, they exactly. usually would in, exactly. in some other fisheries. So you can be fishing and it might come together at you know, 3 p.m. Yeah, like, yeah, so. exactly. Gets you a little nervous sometimes. You just, Where's you <laughs> yeah, out? It's a it's mental game. Scratch your head all day and then finally comes together. Yeah, so, yeah. good ending then, for, for sure. For sure, man, it is. Uh, I appreciate it, that was a great day. Uh, it's my pleasure, anytime, man.